compared to the combined Africa experience in this room, I feel really like the rookie, and I'm uh, learning this afternoon, this morning, uh, more about Africa than hopefully I can still contribute something to the discussion. Um, and um, I was emboldened by two comments that were made this morning uh, about the lack of a, an ecosystem for startups. And I was also emboldened by the comment that it's difficult for entrepreneurs to access finance. And we call this also financing the, the missing middle. So hopefully I can demonstrate to you that in this part, we have a lot of experience and therefore hopefully we can contribute to the discussion today um, and um, also show how we can bring innovation to Africa or embrace the innovation in Africa. So, um, let me just see how this works. Yeah. Um, I have to show you a little bit the heritage where we're coming from to be able to explain how we can bring innovation to Africa. Finance in Motion is um, an impact um, asset manager. We have currently four funds. Uh, the largest one being in Eastern Europe, the, the EFSE, that mainly finances um, financial intermediaries, then on lend to small and medium and micro-sized enterprises. Uh, so this is pretty much bridging uh, the missing middle. Um, we have um, a Green for Growth Fund, which brings renewable energy um, to um, finance to renewable energy. Um, and we've transferred the experience that we made in Eastern Europe with the EFSA fund to the SANAT fund. Um, again, financing um, small, mic micro, and medium-sized enterprises through the fund um, in North Africa and the Middle East. We have an office in Cairo. We have an office in Casablanca. Um, we have an office in Nairobi as well. I'll come to that in a second. Um, and we have recently also opened a fund in um, South America, in Latin America, which invests in biodiversity. Um, just to show you some figures, um, and because it's really about how can you use technology to create an impact, um, we have um, cumulatively uh, dispersed more than 3 billion euros uh, since inception of the company, which was some eight years ago. Um, we have made over 500 investments in these financial intermediaries that then have then on land to these small enterprises. And just to give you another figure, for a fund like the Sanat Fund, that translated into 100,000 sub-loans, i.e. small loans of sizes from $500 to $5,000 that ultimately reached entrepreneurs. Um, we've um, also have uh, had, and this is important, um, we advocate very strongly, which also I heard from Mr. Nuke just now, um, the public-private partnership model. So in all our funds, obviously, the EU, KFW, BMZ are invested, but also we have a considerable amount of private uh, capital now involved in all of these funds to finance these uh, micro entrepreneurs. Um, how do we embrace the topic of innovation and how can we bring this to Africa? Um, we started a year ago for our biggest fund, the EFSA fund, to have a startup competition here in Berlin. So we invited young startups all over the world because essentially innovation is a global subject. It's not a subject confined to a certain region, it's a global subject because no matter where the start startup resides, the application could be in um, a market in Africa, it could be in Latin America, it could be in, in Asia. So this, the, the digital revolution knows no boundary. So what we've done, we invited 15 startups in the area of FinTech to Berlin to compete for prize money. Um, and we deliberately didn't constrict it to a geography, but we constricted it to the impact. So show us a financial technology that can have an impact, that has uh, an impact on financial inclusion and gets the underbanked um, access to finance, um, financial means. Um, you see that the prices, the first two prices were handed out to two across uh, solutions um, one is creating a platform for payment, the other one is a pl platform bringing buyers and sellers together. And you see the, the, the second one is, is one from Kenya, even though the fund operates in, in Eastern Europe. We then transformed this no knowledge to the MENA region, and we had in Jordan um, a second stage of a, an exercise similar. We invited startups um, that have the topic of fintech and financial inclusion 
um, and brought them to Amman for a two-day session. We had some mentoring sessions. We had some sessions um, to discuss their business models. And eventually, they also uh, competed for prize money. And again, actually, an African um, Acro solution uh, came top um, among a, a Jordanian and one in the UAE. That shows, again, uh, financial technology knows no boundary, and fintech is, is all prevalent. Um, we are now following up these um, competitive startups with um, what we call boot camps. So in October, November this year, we will have some boot camps in Frankfurt, Berlin, and Luxembourg, where we invite selected startups, and again, this is, applies to uh, African, MENA, and uh, Eastern European startups the same way to a two-day, three-day session um, and then followed on by a two-week-long um, sort of on-campus uh, discussion. Um, and this will be an individual monitoring on their business model, uh, how can they make them more competitive, how can we make them more relevant for the respective markets they are operating in. But we also, as Finance in Motion, put our money where our mouth is. So we invested in, in Oradian, which is a, uh, a cloud-based core banking system. Now, what's, what is a cloud-based core banking system? Microfinance institutions have very high IT outlays. So often um, in the startup phase, a big part of their expenses goes to IT systems. Now, they offer, Oradian offers a cloud-based system that takes over all their IT needs and therefore decreasing the amount that the microfinance institution has to spend on IT. That's solely cloud-based and it works. Um, and therefore they can pass on these cost savings to their customers. And therefore they're also operating in far-flung areas that they couldn't operate if they had a higher cost base. So um, specifically they transform basically what you see here from the data entry, data storage, into modern means of uh, technology. So they, the, the data entry is not done manually and it's not stored like you see it down there, but it's actually um, on a computer, but it's based in the cloud. That enabled um, Oradian, for example, to go to markets uh, like Nigeria in the north of it. And you know that this is a quite a troubled region at the moment, but they've also extended their operations now to Ghana, Swaziland and other parts of Africa. They're also operating in Asia, in Myanmar, and, um, but the next market in Africa will be also Tanzania. And obviously, we also a partner in green tech because we also believe what they're doing, financing SMEs, essentially, in Africa and uh, financing them with equity, which is much needed. Let me focus a, a few more on these themes, why we think innovation is very necessary and how we can contribute to innovation in Africa. This is a study by McKinsey and basically shows exactly where our heart is. 80% um, of the unbanked you will find in Africa. So 80% of people who have no access to financial means of the two and a half billion people in this world are in Africa. And that's obviously a target group we want to um, help. And how can we help this? Again, the uh, idea is to help with um, modern technology. The topic or the company M-Pesa was mentioned a few times already today, but it's a poster child, so I think this is a very prevalent and a very relevant exercise. Um, as people already said, 50% uh, of Kenyans have a mobile wallet. Mobile wallet allows you to get access to finance, even though you might not have access to a bank, and this is usually where the underbanked um, usually struggle with. Um, but also the transfer, money transfer between countries and from country to country is a, is a very important pro um, problem in Africa. It costs, transferring money to Africa is, most of the, is one of the most costly exercises that you can have. So if you find fintech solutions that can actually make these remittances from abroad to Africa cheaper, that's again a point where you help um, people access to finance and help people to um, basically be able to uh, gain their own livelihood. Um, it also extends beyond mobile wallets and um, beyond what we just said in, into 
the cross-border transfers. And that's where it becomes also very interesting for us because ultimately FinTech also allows you to create platforms to finance SMEs. So away from the traditional banks, you find platforms that can um, give SMEs access to finance. For that, you need um, a very good credit scoring system that gives some confidence to potential lenders that ultimately they also get uh, repaid. Um, as Mr. Nuke already said today, uh, um, an important topic is also digital identity and blockchain technology can help with this. Um, often there's um, no identity of people, people just simply don't have a passport. So how can you prove that you are the person that takes on uh, the loan? Um, and the second point is often, uh, which becomes also increasingly uh, a problem, um, is um, the land registry. Often this doesn't exist. So if you can use blockchain technology to um, register this in a, a fail-safe way, then you go a long way to helping people getting access to finance. Um, another topic close to our heart is obviously agriculture. You saw this from our competition that two of the winners, three of the winners actually, uh, were in the agri area. Um, and also these small holders are often excluded from access to finance. So therefore you also need to find with FinTech solutions to give them access to finance because this then allows them to go beyond just subsistence farming and to a farming where they can make more than just their livelihood. Um, and, and finally, um, often in, um, in Europe, FinTech is disruptive. So it's replacing banks, it's replacing financial intermediaries. In Africa, what we believe, it can al always be more of a partnership with existing banks because there might not be legacy systems that you disrupt, but you simply find a solution for something that has not existed before. So to conclude, um, we would like to bring, and we're already doing it, but we would like to bring more our expertise that we have gained in financing these micro and small enterprises in Eastern Europe, in Northern Africa, in the Middle East, to further parts of Africa. So we are, uh, will be strongly launching an initiative to maybe even extend the Thanat Fund to Sub-Saharan Africa, um, but also bring our other funds closer to Africa because we believe strongly that this is where we can make an impact. Thanks very much for your attention. Thank you.